Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So it's been just over a year since that fateful Gillette ad was released, that a rather interesting piece of short cinema that accused Gillette's target Margaret of being afflicted with the sin of toxic masculinity. This was of course done under the guise of caring for men and their well-being, which seems to be the new direction that feminists have taken. It's a very insidious move in the culture war. Fourth-wave feminist demagogues seem to have realized that their take-no-prisoners approach is actually turning people off, so they have started to disguise their bigotry with a more, dare I say it, maternal approach. And speaking of maternal, the Gillette ad had plenty of that quality. Images of young boys with anxious faces were front and center, looking at their mothers and fathers with doe-eyed innocence, beseeching those adult figures for guidance. This was applauded by feminists everywhere because, after all, so many of them have sons and they would hate to see their sweet little boys corrupted by hostile societal forces beyond his control. You'd think from this commentary that feminists really do care about little boys, but in reality, they're just using it as an excuse to emasculate men right from the get-go. If they really, really cared about the well-being of boys, well, they wouldn't be using them as weapons in the culture war. They would be, instead, focusing on the nasty little fact that boys are falling behind girls in education all across the developed world. From preschool to university, boys and young men are lagging. It's a reasonably well-known fact that more women than men go to university and have done so for some time. According to the OECD, 56% of university students worldwide are women. In Australia, that number is 58.4%. However, what people don't seem to realize is that boys are falling behind girls not just at university, but at every level of their schooling. According to a study by the OECD, boys are less likely than girls to do homework and read for enjoyment, and more likely to play computer games and spend time online. They are also more likely to have negative attitudes towards school and arrive late. As such, and not surprisingly, by the time kids are 15, girls are on average a year ahead of their male peers in reading aptitude. When it comes to final school exams in developed countries, girl graduates outperform boy graduates in all fields except for maths and science subjects. Therefore, more women apply for university and more women graduate. Men, on the other hand, are more likely to drop out of university and high school. They are also more likely to be suspended or expelled. This lag in results starts very early on. Biologically, boys mature slower than girls. According to Professor Gilbert Stowart, a psychologist who specializes in neuroscience and educational research at Essex University, boys' and girls' brains develop at different speeds, which includes slower language development for boys. Now, this slower language development means that boys score lower in reading than girls. They do, however, outdo girls in numeracy and maths on average all the way through their schooling, which explains why at university they tend to dominate the STEM fields. However, this lag in reading and language skills can cause significant confidence problems for boys early on. I mean, after all, when you are just starting out at school, communication is everything, and maths and science aren't quite so fancy and prominent as they are later on in your school career. As such, boys have already been turned off school from kindergarten because they have a harder time keeping up. This, needless to say, does not set boys up well for the rest of their school lives, which is why by the time people actually realize that less men than women are heading to university, it's too late to start actively recruiting them. You lost them long ago. I mean, not that anybody really cares. I mean, affirmative action for men on campus? Are you kidding me? If anything, the feminists running academia want less men going to university. So, what are the specifics of this general lag? Well, let's use Canada as an example. According to Statistics Canada, a lot of these differences in school performance can be put down to innate differences between girls and boys. As relayed in the National Longitudinal Study of Children and Youth, from the moment they are born, boys seem to unfortunately face more challenges than girls. They are more likely to be categorized as having activity limitations than girls. They also lag behind girls developmentally in their early years. For example, from birth to three years old, only 12% of boys are categorized as having advanced motor and social development. This is compared to 21% of girls. 
Also, on average, five-year-old boys score 97.2 on a test of copying and symbol use compared with 104.3 for girls. Even things like independence in dressing themselves boys tend to be behind on, with 78% of five-year-old boys displaying independence in dressing compared to 87% of girls. Boys also have more behavioral problems than girls. Five-year-old boys display less attention than girls, and 16% of 4 to 11-year-old boys display aggressive behavior as opposed to 9% of girls. Also, 14% of 4 to 11-year-old boys display hyperactivity compared with only 6% of girls. As such, by the age of 15, girls are outperforming boys in standardized tests and are also eclipsing them in their overall school results. The same is true of the UK, where girls outperform boys at almost every level of their schooling. This opens less doors for boys at a tertiary level. For example, in 2018 in the UK, 38% of female school leavers went to university as opposed to only 28% of males, which is a gap that has unfortunately widened significantly over the last decade. Other reasons put forward to explain why boys lag behind at school are social factors. Parenting is a big one. Parents can often interpret the more rambunctious nature of their sons as a lack of interest in quiet activities, so will spend more time reading to and playing with their daughters, which can set boys back, of course, in terms of reading and language skills. Another is that preferred classroom etiquette, so quiet, focused students who listen to teachers and learn independently, is much, much more suited to what you'd call girl-typical behaviour. Stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out. Besides, you're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. You do it then if you're so clever. Go on, go on. Wingardium Leviosa. Because boys mature slower and start school with, on average, a lag in reading and language skills, plus a tad more testosterone, they are much more inclined to be discouraged and bored and therefore have trouble concentrating. This can lead to bad behavior, which in turn leads to a class disruption and eventually a trip to the principal's office. Not because the little boy is particularly naughty or lazy or bad, but because the environment he is forced to learn in simply does not suit him. When God Leviosa. Well done, when dear. God... Then, of course, there is that trendy tendency to put this lack of interest in school down to masculinity. That is, boys apparently see doing well in school as more of a girl thing and don't want to be mocked for being, you know, swats or teachers' pets. As such, they feel like they need to live up to a kind of rebellious stereotype where trying at anything is frowned upon and status is everything. I personally do not agree. You can't just fob all male typical negative behavior onto the very abstract concept of masculinity or social pressures. Slacking off and sticking it to authority figures is actually the opposite of masculine. Masculinity is defined by hard work, stoicism, and respect for those who are trying to help you. It is not defined by intimidating your classmates, distressing your parents and siblings, and disrespecting your usually female teachers. This social issue with boys has nothing to do with masculinity and everything to do with the fact that, in many cases, boys are, quite simply, sometimes, too cool for school. Now, are you sure that it was Jonah that welded your locker shut? Because you say you didn't, is that right? No, I didn't do it, sir. He did it, sir. I don't know, he did it. It wasn't me. He's lying right to your face. It's got his pussycat tag right in the front. What? Shut up, Ringer! They don't like school. It doesn't suit them. From very early on, they lack the key communication skills that help children gain confidence in the classroom, and since nobody pays any attention to any of this, of course they develop more negative attitudes to school than girls do. Of course they don't want to try. Of course they do less homework. Now that's not to say that girls necessarily have a happier time at school than boys do, quite the contrary. However, girls are inclined, whether by their nature or by how they are socialized, to sit quietly, pay attention, and communicate better than boys do. They embody much more easily the archetype of the good student, hence the better results. Considering all of this, why isn't there an international stink? After all, there is always mention of girls in third world countries being denied schooling. So why isn't this crisis in boys' education in the West made a fuss of? I mean, this isn't a new thing. Boys have been lagging behind girls in school way back to the mid-20th century in some cases, with not 
much improvement. But before I tell you the reason why there isn't an international stink about the crisis in Western boys' education, how about you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already? You've made it this far through this video, I'm sure you've watched a couple of my other videos, and you haven't yet hit the subscribe button. So if you would do that for me and subscribe, I would absolutely love to have you. Let's get me to 200,000 subscribers by my birthday in July. That's a very cool goal, and I would be very happy if that happened. Well, the most obvious reason nowadays that no one seems to care is that it's not trendy to care about boys and men. Particularly since a lot of the boys doing the worst in classrooms are white and working class. The Marxist feminist left that controls the education system has no time for white men or white boys and especially not the working class. They think that men are the beneficiaries of an unearned white male privilege and are possessed by a demon called toxic masculinity. Therefore, according to feminist academics, white men must be routinely subjugated as a sort of sick vengeance for a patriarchal past. Even poor white men receive no sympathy from the regressive leftists in academia. Remember, the left, for all of their talk of sticking up for the poor and the meek against the wealthy capitalist man, has never actually found the poor very palatable. They just hate the rich. Big difference. Ultimately, the reason there is so little focus on boys' school education and so, so, so much attention lavished on girls is because while boys do worse at school, they do perceivably better on the workforce. On average, they make more money than women do, even though less of them graduate universities. Now, this is because the boys who do go to university tend to gravitate towards STEM subjects, which open doors to extremely highly paid fields of work. Girls, on the other hand, gravitate towards people-focused degrees and careers, most typically things like, of course, nursing and teaching, but also HR, event management, public relations, the arts, you know, that sort of thing. As the broad psychology goes, women are interested in people and men are interested in things. Also, the inevitable biological reality is that women will generally pause or halt their careers in their late 20s and 30s in order to have children. Whereas men, who don't on average take the same time off for obvious reasons, continue to work, advance and earn. Therefore, the vast majority of discussions of gender equality focus on the much misrepresented gender pay gap. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Feminist leaders claim that because men, on average, earn more than women, that they therefore are innately privileged, so women need all the help and empowerment that they can get. This is ridiculous. This perception of men as somehow privileged because they happen to be the highest earners is based on the apex fallacy. That is, the perception that the experience of those at the top or apex of a group reflects the experiences of all members of that group. This apex fallacy of male experience can be seen, funnily enough, in the final exam results of students in Australia. In Victoria and New South Wales in 2019, the average final score or ATAR of girls was a couple of percentage points higher than boys. However, the majority of the students who got a perfect score of 99.95, which is the highest ATAR you can get, were boys. Most likely because they dominate maths and science subjects, which are, I believe, scaled upwards in terms of marks. So, while at first glance it seems that boys are doing very well in education because they occupy most of the top scores, your average male student is lagging behind. But because it's boys, nobody seems to care or even notice. This is a metaphor for life. While men are the top earners, that does not even begin to cover the experiences of all men. Just because a small percentage of men are doing really, really well does not mean that all men are doing the same. We have been seeing the results of boys lagging behind girls in school education for decades. Men are, and have been for some time, the majority of the homeless, they are the majority of the alcohol and drug addicted, and they are the majority of those who make the decision to end their lives prematurely. They do all the worst jobs in the most dangerous conditions, they are more likely to be perpetrators and victims of gun violence, and they make up over 90% of prisoners. They are also vastly more likely to be mass shooters and vastly more likely to be recruited into certain extremist groups, the names of which I cannot mention in this video or YouTube will ping me, but I am sure that you get what I mean. 
So, well, sure, some men are doing great financially. Your average Joe is kind of struggling. And the struggle doesn't just start when they hit the job market. It starts years and years earlier when they are toddlers. Now, if it were Western women who were lagging in this way, we would not hear the end of it. But since it's boys, silence. There is not a peep from any human rights organizations, there is barely a peep from anyone in government, and even if they do say something about it, it's of no interest to anyone in the mainstream media or in pop culture circles because, hey, boys grow into men and men are the privileged oppressor class, so they can't really complain, can they? If we continue to ignore the problems that boys face in school, the situation of men and boys will continue to deteriorate, and I don't know what kind of consequence that will lead to, only that it will not be good. Good, to say the least. We have to stop thinking of men as one giant group of privileged people. That is simply not the case at all. And all those feminists who claim to care about boys when that infamous Gillette ad reared its ugly head should be roundly ashamed of themselves for their hypocrisy, lack of compassion, and willful ignorance. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.